take 3,123.85. Sure. That worked. Whatever. All right. So, welcome. This is an official stream review for a good friend, Dr. Noobs. He's also one of my moderators on my stream. So, today um, I am recording several responses to some questions that I sent him in my professional opinion, if you want to call it a professional opinion, of uh, his overall stream. Now, this is going to entail some things that, you know, are pretty cut and dry, it's like basics of streaming overlays. What are you streaming? Who are you streaming to? Blah, 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 blah. But that's, you know, that's, that's not why I'm offering this. I want to get in there and give my honest opinion on some of the other things. So in an effort to make this pretty easy to digest, what I'm going to do is play back the audio and then I will continue on from there. I will obviously clean everything up, but this way I'm listening to his answers to the questions and then I will provide my professional response. Don't worry, each one is a separate fee for the doctor. Each question is a $45 copay. And please don't be afraid. I'm sure our healthcare will cover it. Just kidding. All right, here we go. Question number one in my ears is why do you stream? Let's go. So I've always had an interest in content creation. I actually used to make a few YouTube videos, but editing the videos intimidated me too much, and so I stopped. Uh, so streaming seemed like a good way to create something without having to figure out how to edit a video. Uh, I also love interacting with my audience in real time through chat. So I do plan on making videos again, uh, but I'll always keep up the streaming as well just because I enjoy it more than having to edit YouTube videos. Uh, ideally, I would like to see an income evolve from streaming. Uh, when me and my wife start having children, I do want to be a stay-at-home dad. And I've explored photography and some other ways to make some income without being tied to an actual job and being able to work from home. And so uh, streaming would be a fantastic way to uh, make some money there as well. That's right. It is. It's a fantastic way to do whatever you want to do. But you got to have more to it than that. There's a lot there. So I'm going to try and unpack this. Awesome reasons to stream. Um, I think that making money at the at the end of the why is, is, is good to note. So here's my opinion. Everybody's why is right. You know what I mean? There's no wrong answer to why you stream. There really isn't. If it's your answer, not wrong. However, what I will say is it's important to share that why with others. It really is important to share the why do you do anything with others when you think about it. Why do you want to be a stay-at-home dad? Does your audience even know that that's something that you would like to do? Now, if you want to be a stay-at-home dad, do you want streaming to be a career or... If you want to be a stay-at-home dad, do you want to just stream for fun on the side? And if you make money, great. If not, no big deal. You got to be able to know that. And it sounds like you kind of know that. Like you, it, it sounds to me, my interpretation of that is, I want to make a little bit of money. If I can. If not, I'm going to do it when I'm streaming. All good. I'm just going to have some fun doing it. Play some video games. Hey, but it's very important to share the why with those that support you. Gotta, gotta share that why. And maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I don't know. I didn't know that until I asked you that question. So, and I'm, I'm somebody that I watch your streams when I can. The time difference makes it a little difficult and I'm more active as a um, broadcaster. So it's tough for me to watch everybody's streams that uh, support me. And I do my best to jump in. But the moral of the story is share your why. Tell them why, like, Today, I'm going to share a little tidbit about myself, and I figured I was going to share why I stream. Back to you, Dr. Noobs. All right, so 
we are going to move on to the next question. And here we go. The Please what? Describe what I do for fun or have as hobbies. And then if I do those hobbies alone or with others. So I do enjoy playing D&D with my friends. I'm usually actually a DM for my wife and some of our shared friends here. Although we haven't really played since the pandemic has hit. Um, other than that, I do enjoy going on hikes and going to the beach with my wife. Uh, and I also, like I said before, take photos uh, while we're out. So I have some landscape and uh, scenery photos. Uh, actually, in my stream, any of the uh, still photos are pictures that I've taken. So... Uh, any of those activities, you know, are obviously involving others. Um, when I'm by myself, uh, nine times out of ten, I'll probably be playing video games. Very curious. Very curious. So, in an effort to unpack that, that I think that it's really, really awesome. First, like, I'm going to just call out the first thing that uh, comes to my mind here. It's very, very awesome that you incorporate some of your personal life into your streams. So the fact that you have photos that you would like to incorporate into your streams is really cool. My question is, is a follow-up question is why? Why do you want to incorporate your personal stuff into your stream? Is there a reason or do you just feel like it's good stuff and you want to share it? I think it's awesome that you do that. But you've got to understand that if you're doing this as a hobby and pure fun, that is perfectly fine. Do whatever you want. Like if you want to share who you are personally in your streams, do it. Absolutely do it. But if you want to do this and make it more professional looking, make it more a business, so to speak, then I would suggest adding more purpose behind each decision so you mentioned dming DD, &D, but you haven't played since the pandemic what's stopping you from taking that that fun that that group entertainment that can last weeks months even depending upon you know the setting what's stopping you from doing a stream that is an ongoing game of DD &D with your regular group now, there could be a million answers to that question. There could be like seven people can't come to stream at the same time. Or, you know, there's so many different speed bumps that could get in the way. But overcome them. Find a way. Like, if you want to do that before the pandemic hit, before 2020 just threw us these million curveballs. You didn't stop then. Why stop now, right? So, it sounds like you do this for fun. This is something that could grow up. But it sounds to me like you do this for fun. And ultimately, if you're doing it because you're playing video games, it's probably going to just be the same in a year, two years. It's probably just going to be, I turn my stream on, whatever party I'm with happens to be in the stream. People hear them and it looks pretty good, right? But nothing is growing. There's no purpose behind the decisions you're making it with that. So I didn't know you put your photos in until you answered this question too. So that's another thing I did not know about you personally, because I think that they were just done. You just did it as a random decision because they were good images, good quality. You popped them in because it felt right at the time, but it, none, none of your audience is going to know that unless you tell them. And if you tell them in the moment on the stream, great. If you tell them beyond that, well, then they learn something else, just a little bit of something else about you. And this is something that all of us work on. All of us work on openness. Humility is a big, big trait. And being open to that criticism of whatever it is, of whatever decision you made about your life, about your business, it's tough. It's tough. But I think that you're on the right track with this. You know why you stream which is good. So let's move on to the next one, which is a little bit of more detail about you. A little bit more. 
next you asked for me to walk you through my about page on Twitch and to mm -hmm. please just explain how I designed it and then what I hope to get out of the specific page. Yep. That's what I want to know. So to be honest, I haven't really touched my page since I started streaming. Stop. What? Okay, continue. I've been meaning to go back and spruce it up, but currently I have my Twitter feed, follow list, and a donations button on it. All right, so I can go to Twitter for your Twitter feed, right? I think. I could donate money on your about page. Okay. All right, cool. cool I it. do plan on going back to spruce it up and include a link to my Discord, to my Twitter, and uh, my YouTube channel when I create it. I also plan on including a list of my PC specs and then maybe even some affiliate li links towards the different components in my PC as well as peripherals that I use for streaming. All right, stop. What's a peripheral? <laughs> All right, good, 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 good plan. Good plan. Um, your about page is you. So I'm going to tell you something. Every streamer on Twitch has an about page. Every streamer on Facebook has an about page. Every streamer on YouTube has an about page and every other platform has some form of a profile for that particular user that we can watch if we choose to. But what if they're offline? Where's the first place you go when they're offline? The absolute first place. It's usually not the videos. If it's a new streamer that you just upon somehow on the internet, maybe you found them on YouTube, maybe you found them on TikTok, Twitter, whatever, you found them and you want to learn a little bit more about them. The first place people go is the about page. So that is your one opportunity as a professional hobbyist, whatever, to share a little bit more about you, about yourself, about who you are, what you want to do. So on my about page, the very first sentence that you're going to read is I am the founder of Wizzle World. I am. I founded Wizzle World. There's a lot more information on my about page that you'll read about me, but it's important to know. And I want everyone to know that I am not Wizzle World. That is an entity. I am an entity that streams. Wizzle World is a completely separate entity. It is not me. It is something that I have founded. It is going to be beyond streaming. It's more than that. But this isn't about me. My point is, share more. If you love to play D&D, &D, put it there. If you love to take photos and you are a professional, quality-driven photographer, put it there. What do you shoot with? What is your camera that you prefer? What lenses do you like? Do you like portraits? What do you do there? That's your moment to shine, okay? The about page doesn't have to look pretty at first. At a minimum, put some text in there about you. Like at an absolute minimum, you gotta put something in there for people to read when you're not available to tell them. And is mine perfect? No. Is any of them perfect? Probably not, man. The about page is so overwhelmingly the same on a lot of streamers. Even mine is probably similar to others. And that's okay for now, but as we grow, we gotta evolve it. It's the only moment though, it's the door sign. If you have a sign on your door and you're a business owner, what does that sign say? Does it say, welcome, come on in, or does it say, get the fuck out? I don't know, I don't know. You, know, you gotta know what you want people to walk away with after they visit your page. It's not easy, but if you don't, go in with that mindset that this is my opportunity to share a message. What feeling am I invoking with this message? What feeling about me will people walk away with after they visit this page? So that's my feedback on the about page. It definitely needs a sprucing up for from you. Um, ASAP because I don't know anything about you other than I can give you money and I see that you have a Twitter. So yeah, I think that it's really, really critical. And the follower list, hmm, does it matter? Does it matter to share who follows you? I don't know. I have no idea. 
I don't know if that's important, but if it's important to you, why is it important to you? Tell me. Tell me why. All right. Next. The next question is... Hold on. Hold, please. Hold, please. I believe... Let's see. Pause, pause. Do, 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 do. Please describe your stream schedule. When? Uh, next, you said to please describe my current streaming schedule. There, there are several different streams posted on Twitch on your stream schedule page. Mm -hmm. and you're curious to know how I decided to plan on these. Mm -hmm. So I sat down with my wife and we kind of walked through uh, what days would work best for her. Mm. And mainly Tuesdays, uh, she has mm -hmm. a lot of classes. Mm -hmm. And so it seemed like a fantastic day for me to stream anyways. Mm. And then from there, I decided that I wanted another weekday to bridge the gap between uh, the Tuesday stream and the weekends. Mm. And I figured Thursday would work best just because it mm -hmm. gives me a day in between my Tuesday and my next stream, mm. as well as uh, kind of bridges the gap a little bit better than if I were to do it on Wednesday uh, or even Friday. Uh, and then I knew that I wanted to do some weekend streams because I usually play games on the weekends anyway. So I figured I might as well capitalize on that time that I'm already spending at the computer. Okay. That's bad. Not bad that your, an your answer is specific. I still don't know when you stream. All of what you just said... I got out of that. You sometimes stream on weekends and Tuesday is a big day. But when you look at your schedule, when I sent these questions to you, the last, like the previous four Tuesdays or whatever, you hadn't streamed. So whatever the, the record of Twitch's record keeping of VODs. Anyway, my point is it's kind of confusing. And if it's a, vari a variable schedule, that's fine. Be clear. Twitch has a feature that a lot of people don't realize is there. When you when you go into the channel page, you have the schedule, right? You can go into there and it, it'll I'll give you the option to localize it to your viewer's time zone. I highly recommend turning that on. Um, and I think you have it on too, on your page. The, the next thing you can do is manually add streams. So I suggest at a minimum, at least once a week, when you know your week's schedule, because you know, you know, we know what days we're likely going to stream, right? Like, even if we don't do it, you can cancel it at any time. No questions asked. Full refund. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you can go in there and manipulate the schedule and add a segment block. So it'll show the seven days in a week and it'll show your planned streams. Plus, it'll show a couple days backwards the streams that you have already broadcasted. So I highly recommend at, l at a minimum at least doing that. But you can also put it on your about page if you're unsure, if you want to be a little bit more specific about why you do certain days or why certain days are not guaranteed. You know, a lot of streamers will say, hey, here's my schedule. I'm Tuesdays and Thursdays at 4 p.m. But uh, on the weekends, you might find me. At a minimum, I know I can see those people on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 4 p.m. And if I like them, I'm probably going to respond to one of those notifications. I'm going to give you an example. I follow a gentleman named defrag he's a streamer from northern ireland and he doesn't stream anymore he stopped streaming like i don't know a year ago something like that but what he does do is create video tutorials on different streaming resources he also is a specialty um stream designer so he makes different um you know assets that you can purchase from his website he also works for nerd or die which is really cool uh, I think he's a, a contractor for them. I'm not sure if he's directly employed. Regardless, the point is, I have viewed many of his tutorials in the past. He went live yesterday. I'm not even kidding. He went live yesterday and I was like, hold on a second. I stopped what I was doing because I know he doesn't stream live. And I went into his stream and lo and behold, I saw him and two other very, very infamous on YouTube for the streaming community um, influencers. I saw Nutty was in the chat. I saw um, Exceldro was in the chat. He's the one who makes like a million OBS plugins. The moral of the story is sometimes people will come when you're 
not announcing the stream because they like you. But they also need to know what the like what the expectation is, right? So I expected him to never stream, but I went because he was. And that's the type of environment you'll get after you have a consistency. His consistency was zero. And all of a sudden, we're like, boom, boom. But you've got to have that expectation. I knew he didn't stream. So anyway, there's that. That is the schedule. And the next question is probably my favorite question that I'm going to ask you and hopefully many more. It is how much off air time do you spend working on your stream? So here we go. Um, so next you ask how much off air time uh, that I use to work on my uh, stream. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I don't spend a whole lot of time outside of my streaming hours working on my stream. Mm. Uh, I intend to start making unique content for YouTube, uh, mm. which will eat up a lot of my time. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I really don't know how much time I do spend on my stream. Okay. Um, I've spent some time adjusting overlays and audio, but I don't really pay attention to how long that takes. Uh, I'm not very good at keeping track of time. I just kind of sit down and do things. Um, but yeah, I have been thinking about doing highlight reels for my videos and stuff. Um, which will take some time, you know, from, from editing and uh, whatnot, but I don't really know, uh, how well my content is really suited outside of a live audience. So it's still something that I'm kind of on the fence about if I'm going to do or not. All right. Well, step one is if you want it to grow, you got to spend more time on, on your stream off air than you do on air. And it's tough. It really is, especially when you're like doing it part time and kind of around the rest of your life. So this is the most important thing that a streamer who wants to get more out of their stream can do is find out a what do they need to do to support their goals as a streamer, which you already have your stuff in place there. So you know what you want to do. You just mentioned men uh, messing with overlays, audio. You and I talked about audio in the past. Um, we had a call one night trying to set it up a little bit, make sure you sounded okay. The, the important pieces of this are what do you need to do and when are you going to do them? You got to do them, but you also have to do, like know yourself enough to set aside some time. Like on Tuesday, perhaps that you have one hour on Tuesday or, you know, Maybe it's Friday or Saturday instead of streaming the whole time on Saturday. Maybe you spend one hour on Saturday dedicated to stream supportive administration. So without that time, it's the biggest lesson that newer or smaller streamers generally learn at some point, but they do need to learn this if they're ever hoping to grow because the accidental stream success doesn't exist anymore. There is no more accidental stream success. That was like eight years ago. Now we have to grind and work for the things that we want to achieve. And it all comes offline. You do not grow as a streamer while you're live. It just barely ever happens. If you do, there's probably something that you did while you were live that helped to grow it. I'll give you an example. I used to play Valorant pretty steadily. Every day I would stream Valorant when I was live. I enjoy the game. Valorant is fun. But it became a repetitive wheel for me that's why i stopped but that's not really why i'm sharing this the way that i would meet people in valorant is because it's a, it's a group of 10 five on five so i'm speaking in a public lobby to potentially up to four people at once and you know some of them found out i stream great i'll share my deets with you that is me sharing information outside of twitch to another audience potential audience member so that they can come to my stream and check it out. Some of them did. Some of them are part of the Wizard World community. Some of them didn't. That's okay. But that is the specific that I did while I was live to help grow my stream. It's not because I was live. It was because I was in a game or in an area where I had the moment and opportunity to market myself to those individuals. And if they liked me, great. They came and followed. If not, no big deal. Maybe they checked me out and decided, you know, this isn't my type of person that I want to follow. So I'm not going to do that. Moral of the story is you don't grow your stream while you're live. You grow your stream by doing things offline 
or with a purpose to help you grow your stream. And the whole uh, concept of streaming is I want, we want, everybody wants to connect with people. We want to, but we can't do it accidentally for our whole life. We have to have that purpose. Alrighty. The next question, it kind of piggybacks, which you answered some of this already, but what types of things do you do while you're off air that relates to your stream? So here's how you respond. Uh, then you ask what type of things I do when I am off air uh, mm. that relate to my stream. And so I kind of touched on this on your last question, um, but currently I don't do a whole lot. Uh, mainly what I do is just work on different overlays and audio settings. Uh, I plan to build out a couple more scenes in OBS to uh, have, and then as well as add some custom transitions between my scenes. Um, so those are the big things that I really plan on, on working on in the future. Uh, but outside of that, it would, you know, just be going through my videos and um, setting up some highlight reels as well. Uh, I do also, <coughs> sorry, I do also watch some of my uh, previous streams for, um, to listen to my audio volumes and, and kind of keep track of that so that I know what I need to adjust uh, for in the future. So I guess that's something that uh, takes some time because I usually watch most of the video. Um, if not, you know, I, I usually skip through it, but that's probably a solid hour or so that I spend watching the video, listening for um, different audio at different moments in the stream. So that's, it's pretty good that you're doing that. Uh, the last thing that you mentioned, listening to your VOD. So listening to your VODs is the number one way that you can learn what works and what doesn't. The ultimate question when you go into that that you need to be asking yourself is, if I wasn't me, would I watch this stream? Would I, if I stumbled upon this video accidentally on the internet or if somebody shared it, would I wanna watch more? Would I absolutely come back to this individual because I've gotten something out of it, be it entertainment, knowledge, experience, fun, whatever doesn't matter would you watch it again and if you say no that's okay why why can't you watch it again what's stopping you from wanting to watch that video again or what's stopping you from wanting to watch that that personality again if you can answer that then good you know what to do if you can't answer that dig deeper watch it again and figure it out so messing around with overlays and stuff is great messing around like figuring it out trying to figure out what you want to improve set a goal for improving one thing each week at a minimum with the frequency at which you stream i would say one thing to improve on your stream each week be it an overlay be it audio be it video maybe alerts whatever but pick one thing each week and make it grow make it a little bit better make it a tiny bit improve that means you're moving forward that means you're growing but it has to be done off air you can't do it while you're live it's pretty cool you got to work to do or schedule it, like make it a point to schedule that time. So the uh, next question is a little bit different. So we're going to dive in and I'm going to let you ask the question. It's, it's really important that you know it was personal. So next you ask uh, what my biggest uh, strength as in my personality is. So. Uh, I'd say that my biggest strength is probably my laid-back personality. Mm -hmm. uh, I try not to let things get to me too much, and mm -hmm. I try to turn any anger that I or my teammates start to develop uh, from the game, I try to turn that into humor. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to keep a light atmosphere, especially around my stream, mm -hmm. um, just because I, mean, I don't... I don't want to become too serious. I want to be a place where people can go to relax. Um, so sometimes when I'm having a bad day in Valorant, uh, you know, I, I do get a little pissed off. But like I said, I try to kind of keep it light and keep it humorous around my stream. Sure. All right. I would say that, that that's an awesome strength. My question now is how do you use that strength on your streams? You, so you mentioned keeping a light atmosphere. 
awesome, but that's not you. That's your community. You want the light atmosphere present for your community? Do you want them who come in, people that you don't know, to watch you, know that you are easygoing, very calm? Do you want them to know that? Or not? I don't know the answer to that. You have to answer that. And if you do, put it, go back to your about page, put it there. Go back to your social media, put it there. Like find places to describe yourself as a calm, demeanored individual, laid back, atmosphere creating kind of guy. I don't want this high energy, toxic as fuck stream environment. That's not me. I do not like that. Ninja? Fuck no. I cannot watch him. It's just too much. That's not my personality type that I like. That's not his strength is not what I desire to be around. His strength is entertaining through anger and frustration. That's ultimately what it is. He also happens to be a pretty good player at the games that he plays. But that's my observation of his strength. There's probably more to that, but that's my observation of his strength. Additionally, if you mentioned earlier one of your passions was photography, like it's something you do outside of streaming, how do you bring that in more? Aside from photos, forget the photos that you're uploading. How do you bring a passion for something into your stream without making it the stream? I don't know the answer to that for you, but I know the answer to that for me. And I'll give you an example of how I do that. I do the voices. Jess, I do voices. Yeah. I do the Molly. I do these things. This is something that is a fun thing that I've done my entire life. Everyone knows if they've played Valorant with me that I can say Molly, like there's no tomorrow. I even look like Brimstone, according to one person. I don't agree with that, but whatever. You get the point. Like that is me bringing something that I'm passionate about doing into my stream environment as much as I can. Will I do it more? Yeah, the more games that I go live with, the more voices I'll be able to emulate and the more things, more opportunities I'll find to do that. So I have the channel points redemption for Molly. But that's my point is how do you bring that strength into your stream? There's many strengths you can have too. It's not just that particular thing. So we're going to dive into to the antithesis, the opposite. I think he means opposite. Yes. I mean, opposite of strength, your weakness. I'm going to talk a little bit about your weakness. Let's find out what it is. Uh, next, you asked what my biggest weakness is personally. Mm -hmm. What is it? So uh, I'd say my biggest weakness is probably my lack of motivation and my desire to procrastinate. Uh, it's something that I've dealt with for a long time pretty much as long as I can remember mm -hmm. uh, I kind of bargain with myself where I tell myself oh you know I'll play video games or I'll watch this show now and then I'll go and clean the house or take care of whatever <laughs> things I'm supposed to take care of that day once I finish one round or or one episode and then I have a really good round and I want to play another one or the episode has a really bad cliffhanger and so I watch another one and then next thing I know, I've watched seven episodes or played, you know, 10 rounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point, it's too late to do anything mm. uh, that day anyways. And so then I push it off to the next day and kind of fall into the same habit. So that is something that I've worked on and I feel like I've gotten better at. Uh, mm. But it's definitely still something that I struggle with. Okay. Okay. Um, here's the problem. You're wrong not lack of motivation that's not the right weakness for what you just described I'm not saying you're wrong for not wanting to go do chores around the house nobody likes to do chores really i believe there's two things that could be related to it the first one is prioritization that's key so the best example i can give is like school everybody at least in the u.s has school right and we've gone through several years of it we have homework assigned over the time. We don't want to do homework. We'll do other things, right? Because of our prioritization. It's not because we're not motivated. No, you're motivated. You want to go play video games. You're motivated to go do that. That's that's entertainment for you. Or 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 more, right? It might be a social connection. You might be able to meet and chat with people in the games that you play, which I'm sure you do when even when you're offline. 
Watching TV is a form of entertainment for informative purposes. You might watch the news, but you mentioned an episode might have a good cliffhanger. Well, we've known they've had cliffhangers for about four decades, right? So don't give me its lack of motivation. You're motivated to do stuff. That's an inaccurate assessment there. What I will tell you is prioritization is something to look at, but also confidence. Confidence is key in everything in life. If you know why you want to do something, yeah, I did the Eddie Murphy. If you know why, you know how eventually. And once you know how, you build confidence in that thing. I'll give you an example. Once I learned that I could do voices, I was very confident in specific types of voices. Can I do all the voices? Fuck no, I can't do everybody's voice. But, and was I ever confident enough to become a voice actor? No because I didn't want to make a living doing that. But I am confident that I can. I am confident in the very specific voice changes that I can do. I look up to people like Robin Williams because they show presence. And that presence that they show is from their confidence in that particular skill or moment of what they're trying to do. I say Robin Williams intentionally because you might think that, well, he was depressed. I mean, he, he took his life, unfortunately, very sad through suicide, but he was still confident in his ability to make people laugh. I can't explain why he took his life, but what I can tell you, it wasn't because he had a lack of confidence. It may have been because he had a very, very tough personal life. You know, he was addicted to many drugs over the years, things of that nature, but he had confidence. When he got on that stage, he had confidence. George Carlin, another one. Comedians have a lot of confidence. They have other things that usually bring them down. But if you watch somebody on a stage, a band, a public speaker, a church pastor, if you're religious, whatever, usually you want to go back if they are confident in what they're saying, if they are confident in the ability to share information, if they are confident that you're listening. Confidence is key. And it's something that I think you haven't looked at yet. Your confidence in your streams isn't as strong as it could be. And the reason I know that is because you jumped at the chance to get somebody else's perspective. And I, I, I support that. I think that's awesome. I absolutely encourage more people to do that. So you took the first step in saying, hey, I don't think I'm good at this. Or I think I could improve this, whatever this is, right? So you wanted other people to look at it too. Not a big deal. We all need to know when those moments are. But that also tells me that you don't have a confidence in everything that you've created thus far. And I believe that you have done well with a lot of the creations that you've made. Can we all improve? Yes. Can you improve? Yes. Audio improved? Great. Step one. Done what's next why do you stream what do you stream who are you when do you stream and how do you do all of the things that lead to the current recipe so it's who what when where and why and how that is the moral of these questions and the last one i think is probably the most important um for you personally so i'm just gonna let it play uh, but the last question is about what's next. That's really, really important for all of us to determine. And the last question you asked is if I'm okay with any additional follow-up questions, advice, et cetera, uh, in a few minutes to measure my progress. And that's absolutely something that I'm Months. interested in. Uh, I'm always open to advice and criticism. I know I have a long way to go and I'm always willing to listen to others for uh, suggestions on how to improve myself and yeah, my yeah. content. Important. Um, and especially from you, just because I do oh. enjoy your content and I feel like there's a lot that I can learn uh, from you. So, uh, but yeah, those are my responses. I hope that you enjoy them and um, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the ending. The ending to that particular snippet was funny to me. So thank you for the kind words. I do appreciate that. More importantly, though, 
measuring progress and being able to follow up on that progress is not something that we can expect others to do 100% of the time. Will I follow up? You'll find out. But how do we follow up ourselves? How do we individually measure our own progress? And it's slightly different for everybody, but I can tell you there's a lot of commonalities among streamers. Followers, subscribers, number of average viewers. Those are the ones that like the, the stream platforms want us to follow, but that's not the right answer. Those numbers are numbers and they are results of our actions, but they are not the right way to measure progress. The way to measure progress is, are you happy with the steps you have taken to improve X, Y, and Z? And if the answer is yes, can it still be improved? Yes or no? If the answer to it is no, cool, what's next? If the answer is yes, it still can be improved, okay, let's revert back to step one. What do we need to do? What needs improvement? How are we going to improve it? When can we implement said improvement? And how do we measure whether or not said object has improved? Object being the X, Y, or Z. It could be audio, could be video, could be audience retention. It could be number of average viewers. It could be people who return loyalty, like a community loyalty. Any one of these things can be measured, but you have to determine what is the thing that I want to measure and how am I going to check myself? How am I going to keep tabs on me? And once you can answer that, you don't need you don't need a whole lot of extra support. That means you're giving it all to yourself. And what you'll find is when something comes up, because there's always something that's going to come up, be it maybe there's an audio crackle or, you know, maybe somebody was muted, you know, whatever. Your community or your support structure that has kind of culminated around you, they'll help you. They'll do it for you, which I think is awesome. And that is what it's all about. So... In sum, this was a different type of stream review. I didn't pull up your stream page to show the world. No, 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 no. That's for you to do. But what I'm trying to do is to, to get into the like psychology of streaming. And am I a psych major? No, 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 no. But I am a, a coach. I have coached many people and trained a lot of people over the years. And I know that the most important things are often overlooked. And I hope this was helpful. I really do. If you have questions, hit me up. Um, so yeah, enjoy the intro. That is yours. It's a gift. The intro is something that uh, hopefully everybody here sees in noob streams, but I do appreciate your support as well, Dr. Noobs, a.k.a. those who live in Hawaii. Take care now. Bye-bye then. We will stop recording. Eh, bye. <laughs>